Israel has been directly attacked by Iran. Hundreds of rockets and drones were fired at Israel by Iranian forces stationed throughout the greater Middle East over the weekend. The U.S. military, along with its British allies, as well as Muslim allies like Jordan and Saudi Arabia, intercepted the drones and missiles with their defensive systems, preventing Israel from receiving much damage. But this is a clear escalation by Iran against Israel, which has been at war with Iranian-backed Hamas in Gaza since the October 7th terrorist attacks. A spokesperson said yesterday that an IDF spokesperson said yesterday that, quote, even while under attack from Iran, we have not lost sight, not for one moment of our critical mission in Gaza to rescue our hostages from the hands of Iran's proxy Hamas. The ongoing conflict is taking front stage in the U.S. political discourse with the issue becoming a major topic in the ongoing presidential election. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's that's because we show great weakness. This would not happen. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and it would not have happened if we were in office. You know that. They know that. Everybody knows that. And joining us now to discuss further is Annie Cyrus. Annie is an expert on Iran, being Iranian. Um, and she joins our show now. Annie, I, I'm really interested to talk to you because you always have such a unique perspective because, you know, you have your pulse on what's really going on outside of, we get messaging filtered through us from whatever the Pentagon wants us to see or our controlled media. Um, tell us first off, just your initial thoughts on, on the weekend's activities from Iran. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Emerald. And, um, my very first response when I heard the news, which was IRGC has announced that we have launched drones and it's going to take about an hour to hour and a half to get to destination. My first response was, well, this is a charade. This is not an attack. This is a bait. Reason number one, Islamic Republic of Iran's military has what it takes to attack with no announcement and do proper damaging if they wanted to. So this is unusual for Iran's regime to come out and announce. Then I got the next update, which was this wasn't the regime of Iran. This was all solely on IRGC, which is Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Why does that matter? Because Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, was put together originally by the Supreme Leader of Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979, but it is not an entity of the government in Iran, but rather it's an Islamic entity that will guard all Islamic revolutions. That's when I realized, oh, I see what's happening. They're just doubling down on what they did on October 7th through Hamas, and then on October 18th through Hezbollah, they're just joining this Islamic attack against Israel. You, you you said you feel like this is not a real attack, it's a bait. Are they trying to bait us into World War Three? I believe what they're trying to, yes, the end, the end game would be World War Three, but not the way we're used to World Wars. The bait is they're hoping for Israeli government to respond, military response, and they're hoping for American government to get behind Israel because next Saturday happened, which right immediately after that, IRGC put out a press release saying, here's a warning. If in any shape or form, U.S. would get behind Israel, the next attack will be in the United States of America. And we both know, Emerald, they have plenty of their terror cells here in America standing by for green light. So sure. from listening to their side of news, our side of news, Israeli side of news, all of it, this is baiting Israel to attack, hoping for U.S. to back them up so they can actually do the next September 11 they've been planning right here in America. Which leads us to, I think, the main question in the background of this whole conflict. There is no denying that the U.S. is funding both sides of this conflict, right? We have now given, what, $8 billion, maybe more, dollars to Iran or release the funds most foreign policy experts, and if you think differently, I'd love to hear it, think that that money was used to fund the October 7th attack by Hamas. So what is going on here? 
it, it we knew giving their that money because the Trump administration said it for many years that anytime you allow Iran to have money, it goes to their proxies and you get terror attacks. Correct. So we knew in releasing these funds that that is what would happen. So what are what is our government hoping to come of this? Well, I'm going to answer you as a point of view of an ex-Muslim. The Biden regime, which is the third tar- uh, term of Hussein Obama's regime, they have one goal and one goal only. And anyone who wants to deny it, they can deny it. But I think it's hard to deny it at this point. And that is destruction of America as we know it. They are after our Judeo-Christian values. They are after our freedoms, our liberty, our way of life. I have said this for about 10 years now. The number one tool you can use to achieve the destruction of America as we know it is Sharia, which some people know as ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, IRGC, Hamas, Houthis. That is what I'm referring to. Hussein Obama started the original funding of Iran knowing very well where that's going to go. And then President Trump, of course, walked away from the deal, put the sanctions back. They were suffering pretty bad under Trump administration. Also, he had no problem going and taking out Qasem Soleimani if needed to be. Then Biden came back and started funding them because the destruction was being delayed. Good for us, bad for them. So funding Iran and Iran's proxies is exactly how they can end up starting either a civil war inside America or another destruction such as September 11, especially 2024 being election year, it works pretty well for deep state. So looks like Biden is supporting Israel, but look at the press release. Biden regime tells Israel, do not respond. And then Biden regime tells Iran, continue your activities within limitations of areas. If that doesn't tell you what's happening, no, nothing else will tell you what's exactly happening. Right. And to talk more about the funding, uh, according to Iran International, the Israeli military found documentary evidence that Iran, Iran, talking about turning the money around and funding terror, right, was funding Hamas to the tune of at least $222 million between 2014 and 2020. Um, so you really can't you can't separate Iran from Hamas, can you? No. So the the groups that you definitely cannot separate Iran from or separate them from Iran is IRGC, it's Hezbollah, it's Houthis, and it's Hamas. All of those four terrorist groups, for lack of a better term, they are all created, trained, funded by Islamic Republic of Iran's regime, and every single plan, every single action has to be approved by the Supreme Leader of Islamic Republic of Iran. All four groups report back to Khamenei, who's the Supreme Leader. So every time somebody says, you know, Hamas did something, that means Iran did it. If Hezbollah did it, Iran did it. If Houthis did it, Iran did it. IRGC did it, Iran did it. But the problem is, I don't know why my fellow Americans aren't picking up the phone, calling the representative and say, listen, we know it's Iran. We are hearing testimonies from FBI, for example, that Iran is a big threat. But why is it that you're not stopping the indirect negotiations of U.S. with Iran? And and that is actually what I wanted to ask you about next, because the Biden administration has made it very clear that they want to go back to restoring the Obama nuclear deal with Iran at the same time they've been restraining Israel, as you noted um, just a moment ago, in its counterattack against Hamas in Gaza. And while, you know, pushing the Saudis away, who actually came to the aid of Israel, uh, so how will they re-enter a deal? I I don't think there's going to be a deal no matter how much posturing the Biden administration does, correct? You're very correct. There will not be a deal. And not only Supreme Leader of Iran, but also the president, Ibrahim Raisi, has made it very clear we are not signing any deals. However, the negotiation continues, one, going back to Biden is using the Islamic regime to to create chaos here in America, possibly maybe be able to 
buy time to stick around and destroy our, our country even furthermore. Also, Iran is still trying. They're hoping under Biden regime they might get their very last demand out of this deal, which is for United States of America to remove IRGC from the terrorist list right now. And mind you, they are on our terrorist list. And look at the freedom they are having to do whatever they want, including being smuggled into our country through the floodgate known as open border. They're coming in. We flew a bunch of them in during Afghanistan withdrawal, but they're in our terrorist list. So the last thing Iran is trying to get out of this is removal of IRGC from the list. And the last thing Biden is hoping is funding them enough for them to be able to provoke Israel long enough or hard enough to achieve the final goal, which is an attack here in America. Mm. You know, you, in listening to you and where we know, just following the money right from the Biden administration, Donald Trump is exactly right. This wouldn't have happened if he was president, because this is what the Biden administration wants to happen and have been making, making sure happens. Um, Annie Cyrus is very interesting. Also very interesting how you um, clarify that the nuclear talks are nothing more than a ruse on both sides to stall and get what they want. Um, the Biden regime as well, just play acting. Thank you so much, Annie Cyrus. It's so good to see you. And you can follow her work at liveuptofreedom.com, liveuptofreedom.com. Thank you. Thank you, Emerald.